let's talk about the Josh Allen contract. I when when this hit on Friday, after you know our show, the number. I don't know why I get surprised by these numbers anymore. Now, obviously, NBA free agency, like, that has shocked me. Trey Young getting $207 million. It just That's numbers that I did not figure you would see in the NBA other than for LeBron James and whatever. But Josh Allen's contract, six years, $258 million with $150 million guaranteed. Tell me your thoughts here. I, last year, like, was great, but I, I'm curious... Can he maintain what he what he built up to last season? You know. So my thoughts are: I think Josh Allen's really good. I think Josh Allen is deserving of a large extension, a good sized contract, all of this stuff. I think it's insane that these teams continue to think. And maybe maybe they can. Maybe they will. Maybe maybe we'll see a breakthrough. But throughout history. You just don't have a whole lot of quarterbacks that are taking up such a large percentage of salary cap winning Super Bowls. You don't have many of them competing for Super Bowls. And why teams just continuously do this over and over and over again, it's shocking to me. Can you pay a guy? Yes. Can you ask him, because this is a hard salary cap league, to try to find other revenue? As long as the owners are spending to the top of the cap, can you find other sources of revenue and sponsorships and other things to try and make sure we're competitive? Do I have to pay you $42 million a year? Like, like what can you buy for 42 that you can't buy for 35? Like, at some point in time, can you help me, please, a little? Why, why do we not see more more teams pay guys based on a percentage of the salary cap. Like, is that illegal Uh, or is that like, yeah, it's too, it's too hard to manipulate. It's too hard to to factor based. I don't think the, uh, I don't think the players union would allow it. And I also don't think the ownership would allow it just simply because the number could swing way too much based on what the salary cap does. Well, yeah, because we expect the salary cap to just skyrocket now that this new deal has been done, which we're, we're going to talk about Tom Brady's thoughts on that here in just a minute. That's right. But the the idea of, hey, instead of you taking 40% of the cap, why don't we just pay you, you know, 33% of the cap, whatever it is, in any given year? And yeah, That's insane. That's insane. You've got a 53-man roster, and you think one person can take up a third of the cap? But I mean, that's it, it's an insane number right now, anyway, right? No, but I don't think it's close to forty percent. Yeah, no, you're right. I'm, I'm might, thinking. I'm, I'm thinking about I the forty two. I might be wrong. I might be wrong on that. But no, it's it's it, it, what what is it? it forty two million a year. It's it, so he's making forty two million a year, and the cap this year is is one hundred eighty two million. Yeah. So oh, okay, so so it's like twenty percent. It's it's uh, yeah, it's it's about twenty percent. So. That, I mean, that's that's a lot. That is a lot. Yes, so no, 20%. that's a lot. That's a lot. The cap and the cap went down. That's what what Tom Brady's going to get to. Yeah. The cap went down like fifteen percent this year, right before the NFL signed the new big deal. Like that, <laughs> I can't explain. <laughs> I can't explain. I, I feel like what the league does to its TV partners, I understand. We're the biggest whale in all of television. And so I'm going to walk into your office, and we're not going to negotiate. I'm going to tell you what I want, and you're going to sign the contract, and then I'm going to walk the hell out, okay? I get that. You can't say no to the NFL or you die as a network. I fully understand that. The Players Union seems to do the exact same thing as the TV networks. Roger walks in the door, tells them what they want, and the players you can say, okay, we'll we'll take that deal. Yeah. No, we'll 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 chat more on on that. I'm I'm wanting to close the show on that because that is bananas. But yes, the Josh Allen deal, he he did increase uh, a lot. His passer rating went from eighty five point three to one oh seven point two last season. His completion percentage went from fifty eight point eight to sixty nine point two. And I wonder how much of that is based on Stefan Diggs coming in. You know, obviously they they've got Stephon Diggs locked up for a little bit, but he he wasn't 
great without that that level of a wide receiver on the team if you don't get a deal done in a couple of years for Diggs, is is no, Allen you still find another? Just find another dig. Yeah, but that means you got to pay somebody else a lot, right? Or you draft. I mean, yeah, if you draft, yeah, for sure. I mean, sure. look at look how many wide receivers have come out of the second round of the draft. Yeah, like you, I'm not too worried about the Diggs deal. And is he a product of Diggs? Uh, a little bit. I think he needs a great wide receiver to really help him. But I also think he improved on his own. Just his accuracy rate changed dramatically. That's something that you can actually measure. That's something that you can actually grade. Which That's is, something which is that so nobody strange. thought he could do. Right, because we, like, we've like we heard from quarterback coaches all the time, like it, it, it is incred- almost impossible. If a guy is not accurate up to age 24 or whatever it is, it, it's almost impossible for him to get more accurate with the football. Like if he just doesn't have it, he doesn't have it. And all of a sudden, Josh Allen is just seventy percent completion percentage. I mean, it, it's absolutely absurd because he was under sixty percent basically his entire career, and and just jumped up ten points like it was nothing. It, it's kind of shocking. I understand why they did it. One hundred fifty million, by the way, is more than what was guaranteed to Patrick Mahomes in his deal. He got one hundred forty one point five million guaranteed, and you know I'm. I'm a little shocked. I, I'm always wary of these deals where you're giving people this much money when I don't know that it's obvious that it was Allen that is the reason for the success. So, you know, I'm, I'm pulling for him. You know, who, who else is the reason for their success? Their offense was one of the best offenses in football last year, and they never ran the ball, ever. Yeah. And if they did run the ball, they ran it with Josh Allen. Their running backs were awful last year. Yeah, and it was like the defense was good last year. It's always been a defensive team, but it, it last year was definitely an offensive team. They they completely and, switched and their, their offense. One hundred percent of their offense ran through Josh. Yeah, so it's hard yeah. to say that he didn't do this. You know, no, you're. I mean, you're you're not wrong about that. I. Now, my my thing is not that he hasn't earned this money. My thing is a hundred percent. I just I think it's much harder to win. A Super Bowl. I think it's much harder to legitimately compete for a Super Bowl when one person takes too big of a piece of the pie. I think that's really hard to do. It's not impossible to do. I think it's really hard to do. What What did they, uh, man, was it in our group chat where somebody sent, you know, Tom Brady's entire career earnings? Are yes, just that was like, me. Okay, just a few million dollars more than what uh, Josh Allen is getting off of this contract? Yes. That's, that's absurd to me. That's like Tom Brady understood you got to get other people paid to be able to win. And it's not that Josh Allen doesn't understand that. It obviously the salary cap has gone up tremendously since Tom Brady started getting contracts. But that is just a straight crazy way to look at this because Brady has played for uh what 21 years at this 20, point. It was 21 seasons yep. Josh Allen over and, over 6 years. This, <laughs> yeah, over the 6 years. It's just a simple matter that Tom always understood winning is more important than getting paid because if you win, you get paid on the back end with all these other things. And, you know, I mean, it's it's strange. Tom just now started getting into, like, mainstream TV commercials for for things like, uh, like Subway and stuff like that. Like, Tom's previous sponsorship, I think he had one for Dodge for a little while, but, like, his big car ad was Maserati. Okay. Like, like, like this is who he's selling. He had some watch company. I don't know the name of it. Some sunglass company. I don't know the name of it. They're like 1500 bucks. The sunglasses. So like the watches are like $15,000. Okay. Like these are the things that he's been getting paid to advertise for, which aren't on mainstream television. Okay. So understand that you don't get those things unless you're, you know, and he could have been Peyton Manning. He he absolutely could have could have bought a bunch of Papa John's and been slinging that kind of pizza, but he's just chosen to not care about that. Yeah. No, you're right. You're right. So I'm I'm curious what this means as far as the contracts for the other guys in that class. You know, Lamar Jackson, Baker Mayfield, et cetera. Are, are we looking at the same kind? Of, because both of them have played insanely well. They, they didn't have quite the season that he had last year, but Baker Mayfield, as you have pointed out on this show, 
rated better at the end of last season over the last eight games than Josh Allen did, and Lamar Jackson has already won an MVP. So I, I would have to imagine that those deals will be similar, right? Well, I think it's going to come down to the person. So there, and and you and you know how I feel about this. If the Browns try to give Baker that kind of deal, like I think we're saying goodbye to, to Miles, and that's going to piss me off. And I think that's a bad trade. There's a world where, and this is Browns folks being excited about Cleveland stuff. Baker was so like appreciative and and happy for but also like understanding of Nick Chubb taking a team friendly deal. And he was vocal about that. And so there's a bunch of Cleveland people that think he's not going to hold them over a barrel the way some of these guys are. He's, he's made a ton of money in sponsorships since his very first second being in the NFL. And, and they believe that he's going to take a team friendly deal. Now, I don't know that I, I don't, you know, I don't know if that's going to happen. I'll tell you this. I don't think the Browns are going to be a great team in three years if Baker's making $43 million. I, I tend to agree. I, and, I, and I'll be ripped shit pit if they lose Miles Garrett because they pay Baker Mayfield $43 million. I mean, but this, like, it does seem like this is the route that everybody's going. Dak Prescott just got a massive contract that it pays him, what, over $40 million a year? Like, it, it's, it, the numbers are mind boggling. I, I just I'm I'm not quite adjusted. It's, no, but it's everybody's mindset. It all it takes is one or two guys to not take that kind of money, and then to win, and then everybody else looks like idiots. And, and it's hard to call him an idiot. He's going to make a fortune, and he's going to play the game he loves. But if the end result is all time greatness, if the end result is 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 being remembered forever for winning a Super Bowl, then then congratulations, those checks are amazing. But at some point in time, if Aaron Rodgers doesn't win soon and his career ends and he finishes with one NFC title and one Super Bowl win, both happened in the same year, at, at what point when we're grading quarterbacks and the greatness of quarterbacks, does he begin to tumble and fall? Because so many other people, you know, were all really good careers and one more than him. I, I feel like I, I kind of thought that the Super Bowl last season would kind of give everybody that that idea, right? Tom Brady came in for, what, $30 million a year, and yep. that team, it, you, we can say that they won because of Tom and what he brought to the table and all that, but again, he only took up $30 million, and you found a way to get everybody paid again. Like, the well, defense is it. It, the, defense is the reason they won. Last. Yeah, yeah. it's not just that they won last year. It's that they're bringing all 22 starters back, which no Super Bowl team has ever done. And they're doing that because when Tom re-upped, Tom didn't take too big of a piece of the pie. So they were able to bring back everyone else. Yes, because everybody enjoyed winning last season. They all understand, yes. hey, if I take a little bit less here, but I win a Super Bowl, I can start doing commercials. I can get paid this way. I can do da da da, da. I can make that money back up, and and it's a lot or, more fun to win. what's the difference between $12 million and $14 million? Like, at the, end of the day, at the end of the day, if that's the difference of you staying on a winning team, are you going into the abyss of a team like, Detroit's been and Jacksonville's been for a long time. Congratulations. Hope the extra two million is is worth it to you. To me, a guy that, you know, is struggling to get to six figures, like like two million dollars would change my life. But to somebody who's made seven to ten million dollars his entire life, is two million dollars really gonna change the map on your lifestyle or your retirement future? I wouldn't think so. And I think it's a lot more fun to win. I mean, that's, that's, so, that's where I but stand But that's just that. the way I've always seen it. I don't fault these guys for signing big deals. I, I, I understand why they do it. I understand why their agents want them to do it. I get why the players' union wants them to do it because the players' union wants everybody to get the biggest contracts because rising tide floats all boats. I understand all of these things, okay? I just want – I need to see somebody consistently winning with a quarterback that makes that much money because I haven't seen them win at all. Ever. Yeah. Yeah. Like there's not one that comes to mind 
where the quarterback was taking up 20% of the salary cap. No, I think I think you're right. I mean, we, we saw Russell Wilson. He was able to get two Super Bowls when he was on a rookie deal. On and, a rookie deal. As soon and as then he once got he gets paid, paid. Yeah. That, 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 that had been close. Aaron Rodgers went and won, got paid. They, they had been close. They had been close, Gary. Like, I mean, and they, they were, they were close last best, year. That's the like... best, people say that's the <laughs> best quarterback that we've had playing football in, in, in the last 15 years. Yeah, yeah. And and he's got one. Yeah, sure. Pey- but Peyton Manning, Peyton Manning, once he got paid, that team just struggled. They struggled. They, they won a bunch, but they couldn't win in the playoff where it matters. Yeah, it took forever. And then and then Manning came back, took a a not crazy deal with the Broncos. They were able to get everybody paid, but then you know everything kind of fell apart after that. And it, it it's just tough. It is tough to win when you're paying that much to one guy. So, yep. you know, and, and no fault to them. Obviously, if they are offering you the money, you know, I, I guess take it and get, you know, take care of yourself if that's what you're worried about. But you want to win, there's different ways you got to go about it. And and I'm curious. I'm curious what the Bills are going to look like going forward. I am very, very curious. Thanks for listening to the Winning Cures Everything podcast. The website is winningcureseverything.com. And if you want to connect with us, we're on Twitter, at GaryWCE, at Chris B. Giannini, at Winning Cures, or you can email us, Gary at winningcureseverything.com or Chris at winningcureseverything.com. Subscribe everywhere you need to subscribe, and we'll see you soon.